Kumbuntu has patched Meltdown. Sorgeforge gets a facelift. Cheat your way to running Linux on a 486. And has Gnome gone clear? Hmm, I don't know, but I do know. It is another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Linux Weekly, Daily, Wednesdays, where we sit back and take that midweek break to talk about just some of the things that, hey, man, we, you know, we just kind of found interesting and we want to talk about them. Hope you find them fascinating. You might know that I have been abandoned. Nay, I'm just left alone. But two people have uh, joined me. Uh, first one is Jill from uh, Linux Tricks LA. Hey, what's going on? Thank you so much for showing up and replacing Pedro who noped out on us because he's a horrible person. Aw. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me. I've been promising for several years and I, <laughs> I, I'm i finally here. <laughs> and, and yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's a thing. <laughs> Super sweet. And you know him, you love him if you watch our Saturday show all the way from Space Canada in Torontosville. Uh, Master Sveg, he, he's here. Hello, I'm I, I'm clearly not Pedro Mateus, as my lower third indicates. <laughs> it, it seems legit. You you know, old man Vin. Uh, but I do know that you're struggling. Uh, the cruel thing is, is he has a switch that he can't play with right now, and I kind of got, got the feels yeah. for him. Got the feels. Sky of Five is seventy is eighty bucks, Ooh. and I and I just pulled the trigger on that, and now now I have hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of gameplay too. Oh wait, me. Uh, mm. It's gonna it's rip, rip Jordan, rip Jordan. Sounds like a fun time, man. All right, so let's get right into this business. We promise you, we're not going to spend the entire episode talking about Meltdown and Intel and AMD and all that. So uh, let's talk about Meltdown uh, in Ubuntu because. Hey, they've updated some things, but I do want to give this a quick mention with Spectre, the Meltdown and the vulnerabilities. It's been patched. It's a thing. You can get it. Uh, the world is not burning. And patch your uh, shite, I guess I should say, because by the time you're listening to this, it, everything should be good. 1710, 1604 LTS, 1404 LTS, 1204 ESM. Woo. Yeah, that's only if you're part of the Ubuntu Advantage. Give us money and we'll still update your stuff. Uh yeah, can canonical can't afford an IPO update. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I think they pushed out the uh, Fedora updates this week as well. The thing with the, the Ubuntu stuff though is, is it's not live patchable, so you're going to have to schedule some downtime if you're running Ubuntu in production. Hi, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a couple um, additional uh, uh, Intel microcode and AMD microcode updates that are coming down the pipe as well to address what is widely considered to be the dark souls of CPU issues. Mm. Well, no, man. I mean, it was like a little bug that's only been around since like 1995. Jill, do you think this has been blown out of proportion or is everyone right to be terrified, petrified and or stupefied? I think it's been blown out of proportion, really. <laughs> but you just, just got to patch things and you're fine. It's uh, Yeah, you just... It, you just got to be happy eating that 50% uh, performance hit on a couple loads. Yeah, I, I've not yeah, seen... Yeah, that, that's the only downside. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah uh, Linus has said 20 to 50% on some applications. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, and that's... it... <laughs> and it's it's all it's all going to be it's all going to be enterprise critical stuff too, like um, mm -hmm. virtualization because this is a big virtual memory attack. So yes. that's that's, that's going to be Docker. fun. And most 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 running, most, yeah, most running hypervisors are using an Intel CPU. This will probably change now that Threadripper has just thrown the glove in Intel's face. But at least until that hardware refresh happens, every everybody's vulnerable. It's great. It's fun time. Well, you yeah. we should point out that Intel released some Linux-specific microcode updates today. So mm -hmm. it'll get sorted. Things will get better. And uh, tomorrow you will still wake up. But if you wanted, have you ever just wanted to pseudo a script that you downloaded off the Internet and just see what it did? I recommend people do that all the time. Just don't don't read anything. Just curl whatever dot bash. Mm-hmm. Pipe it into bash, pseudo pseudo bash even, and have fun. 
Well, I mean, hey, if you, you can alias uh, YOLO to sudo if you want. Spectre Meltdown, Meltdown Checker. I saw this posted on R Linux. And, uh, yeah, I always wanted to sudo random scripts from the internet myself. Basically, this is going to be like, yeah, you, if your CPU was made after 1995, you're vulnerable. And um, yeah, I really don't know what to say to this. I think, uh, who was it? Yeah, it... it, it uh, this, was it Steven... Or who who said Rome wasn't built in a day, but this thing was? Look at the. I think Stevo. Stevo did that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It, it's messy. Basically, what this does is it crawls through like your proc uh, partition mm -hmm. and looks looks for any flags that would indicate that you have a vulnerable um, CPU or the vulnerable CPU hardware, and that's basically it. It's pretty sketchy, uh, and it's a long ass script for doing not very much, to be honest. Do you think it's mining the bitcoins or something along those? No. Well, I'm, I'm I'm like going through it, and it's like, oh yeah, and we're loading random kernel modules. Wait, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. What 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 potential thing are you hoping to glean here by just loading random stuff into my running kernel? I I, I don't know. You, you you mentioned that it's not going to really pass a lint check either. But yeah, I mean, it's not. It's. I got as far as this thing requires root privileges to run and it just disappeared. Because like I said, if CPUs made after 95, you're dealing with branch protection unless you have a Raspberry Pi. We'll talk more about that in the Raspberry Pi section. Uh, mm -hmm. You're vulnerable. Deal with it. I mean, this is a massive hardware issue. Jill, have you downloaded this? Have you ran it or just, just not your cup of tea? Um... I actually was going to download and run it to test some of my old Pentium Pros because that that's that's the 1995 is is when the, they came into being and so mm. a lot of my machines are Pentium Pro so I was just I'm going to do it because I'm curious. <laughs> well, I think the Pentium Pros were the first that would be uh, susceptible. With, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what it's saying. <laughs> I'm I'm actually more shocked that you haven't melted them down for the precious metal inside of Aww. them. <laughs> But, no, they were my precious workstations. That's that's uh, they were my workhorses for years. Right on, <laughs> right on. And now uh, they're your coffee tables for years later. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very thirsty. Uh, Linux Mint, Jordan. What's it about? Never heard of it. Eighteen point three. Oh man, Linux Mint. Everyone, it's my favorite operating system because I love you know distributions that just take packages from other distributions and then call themselves a new thing. And now oh, this, this is Linux Mint. Uh, they have a, they have a new version out. Um, they have the, they're basing on, they're based on the latest and greatest Ubuntu LTS as they are often want to do. Um, I guess the big news here is that, uh, GNOME is not an available installer option anymore. So you're stuck with their cinnamon, which is basically GNOME 3 with some extra stuff tacked onto it or mate, which is GNOME 2 with GTK3 bindings. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I have, I have no opinion on this one way or another because I, I, I don't use it. I don't know. What do you think, Joe? I, 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 I don't know. Maybe, maybe someone here does. <laughs> yes, actually, um, I use Linux Mint a lot to test my computer builds because, the, the for one, it installs in under five minutes from a USB flash drive. It is, it is the fastest, one of the fastest installing uh, distros out there. And I just, I boot from flash drive to test my builds. And it's a really good uh, distro for new users. Uh, Cinnamon is very easy to do coming from Windows, easy to use. So, um, um, yeah, I, I actually don't run it on my systems 24-7. 24 it's, it's more for, for testing and, and to recommend to new users. Yeah, that's one thing I want to ask you about because Mint was everyone's it was the hot new sparkly for a hot, not even a hot minute for several years. It was mm -hmm. the, it's what everyone championed behind. It was the arch of its day. Yeah. And, you know, everyone just ran mint and it was the thing. I, I, I don't think it, that that's a fair comparison. I think it was sort of like the new Ubuntu because for a while people were like, oh, if you want to run Linux and you're a new person, you should use Ubuntu. And then... And another Ubuntu derivative took that crown, and that was Linux Mint. Like I said, it's a, effectively a wicked easy uh, Linux distribution for Windows users, like Arch. 
Ah, yeah, cinnamon no, no. was in response to Unity, actually, the fail of Unity <laughs> when when it started on Ubuntu. So it, it uh, I, I thought it, I thought it, cinnamon was more of like a like a GNOME three response, like oh here's a version of GNOME three well, that that's true. functions yeah. a lot more like GNOME two. Yeah, but it it it, it became popular when uh, Unity became a a thing on Ubuntu. So once they took GNOME away, and then then um, <laughs> Jill. Jill, Unity never became a thing. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> At least not for me. <laughs> Even yeah, Canonical tapped out. They're like, yeah, we're going back to no yeah, one. Yeah, well, I mean, they're just starting to come to terms with that. It's like, yeah, maybe we're wrong about Upstart. Maybe we're wrong about System D. Hey, maybe we're wrong about Mirror. Hey, man, also <laughs> want to throw a little love to uh, Mate Mate with a... Yeah, that's a solid piece of kit. Uh, Martin. Mm -hmm. he, he's dealing with that Mar 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 I mean I looked yeah. at the mint at the end of the day it's 1604 with a body kit on it and there's nothing wrong with that if that's your thing rock on and then again I, I couldn't really get plussed non-plussed anything with gnome not shipping because it's Linux just install it it takes two seconds you know it's 1604 mm -hmm. getting gnome up and running is pretty pretty quick but but you see yeah who would want to use gnome now that you can't have those pesky icons on your desktop anymore <laughs> oh man it's wait is that what we got up next yeah it is yeah that's what we got up next <laughs> buy me some time yeah, so, see, buy see, me see, some time son yeah i i, I, got, I got that smooth transition skills man <laughs> five years and now now i can pivot from story to story all right yeah uh gnome uh desktop icons are removed in the latest gnome 328 that is um yeah, apparently you are no longer able to do that. I'm pretty sure you can turn that back on via like GNOME tweak tools, though, because at least when GNOME 3 first came out, they didn't have desktop icons enabled by default. You needed to turn them on. There was some, I, I, I don't know, GNOME uses like this weird registry stuff for their configuration. I'm not particularly a fan of it, but there was a, little, a nice little GUI called GNOME tweak tools that would enable you to turn that back on. Um, apparently they're still going to have like a GNOME shell extension to uh pe for people who want to have desktop icons i think uh, is it just me or is like your desktop basically just to be sorted folder mm, uh, you're saying it's kind of like warm storage a, a little bit like i I'll, I'll i'll put stuff on the desktop if i like need to refer to a file like immediately mm -hmm. but then that's usually usually goes to like another folder or just gets deleted jill what's your layout like yeah, I do not use icons at all. I like a very, very, very clean uh, window manager. And in fact, mostly I use Flexbox or Window Maker. So I, I like to right click on the desktop and get all my menus. <laughs> I like very so clean. So you, you, also, you also do like the crazy multi monitor stuff, right? So do you do have like yeah. crazy wallpapers and you just don't want to disrupt the artwork? Correct. Appreciate <laughs> yes. <for> and, the, <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, doesn't really bother me when the uh, something has went incredibly wrong in my life if I'm using GNOME, to be honest about that. And here's the thing. I, I do use some desktop icons. I'm sure if you follow me on social media, you've seen my desktop enough to be sick of it. It's basically one line down the left side. And, um, I have a couple of SSDs and a folder or two. Just stuff we use for this show. But outside of that, because I... I went on a tear when desktop icons were introduced into XFCE. And this was like, mm. oh, this is expletive deleted. Who needs desktop icons? Because I was right click on the desktop. That's how you open things, or you put everything in a launcher at the bottom. 2018, I got to be honest with you. I don't care one way or the other. It's like, use what you want, man. I, I don't see. Now, then again, in all fairness, this is stupid because, but this is also GNOME and GNOME as a project. I love you, but you, you lot have been doing things that have both angered and confused me for the better part of two decades. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. No, GNOME tends to honey badger a lot of questionable stuff. Mm -hmm. Say we're going to, we're going to do this way. And if you have any objections to it, well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't even dignify you with response anymore. I don't, I don't recognize it. I, I think I think there was there was that infamous uh, no mailing list thread where someone's like, "Well, XFCE does this," and the guy's like, "I don't know what an XFCE is." Oh boy! So, 
Oh, yeah, man. I don't I don't run GNOME myself. I really don't care for the new version, and I and I actually I, I haven't ran GNOME much myself. <laughs> I like the lightweight window managers. Who needs I, window manager? You know, Go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I actually, I, I actually was liking GNOME three for a while, but then they just started changing things for the sake of changing things, and it seems like they really do. They really have this nebulous vision of the, what they want the desktop experience to be. Except it's like a hazy vision when you like squint your eyes like this and you can't quite see what's in front of you. And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's this. But what if we take this away? Yeah, yeah. No, but what if we add these three things mm -hmm. that no one cares about? Take some more stuff away. It, I yeah. don't know. It, it seems like they lack focus. Or like to me, sort it of does come across as some people trying to be clever with UX design that have no business messing with UX design. I really wish I had recorded... I've, oh, that day I was like, I'm getting 4.413 XFCE, which is not an official thing, but up and building. I had to use GNOME, the latest GNOME. I'm saying PTSD for comedic effect, but that's as close as to what I think it might actually be when I had to launch GNOME. I was like, no, no, this is wrong. What is this? And I could see what they were trying to do, and it was wrong. Um, who needs all this graphical whiz-bang stuff when we have uh, text, Jill? Oh, yes. Now, this is an, um, <laughs> a wonderful alternative to using links or e-links in uh, your, your Linux terminal. And um, it's not the pretty, prettiest looking way to use Firefox, but it does work. And you can watch and YouTube videos on it, apparently. Yes, you can. Uh, the, and you can uh, yeah, you can. Yeah. This, guy, this guy's watching Gangnam Style, I think. You yeah. don't, and you don't have to use AA Library. CACA Live to do it also, <laughs> which is awesome. Now, I think this is a really, really neat, neat project. And I, I did install it and, it, and it does work very well. Okay, well, uh, uh, there, uh, I was just going to say, there, there is a two note. This is all, this is all running out of Docker, so you're going to need that installed. Also, apparently, the pre built version they, um, they provide does not work on AMD CPUs, so you're going to have to rebuild it from source. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's relatively simple because it's just a docker build command but mm -hmm. still it's an added step if you're on team red okay uh help me out with this outside this this 100 percent neat i mean this is absolutely going to give this a try but i always like to sit back and just try as a thought exercise practical use jill help me find a practical use for this <laughs> there isn't one it's it's more for fun um yeah <laughs> so you, you you take an old computer that just has terminal on it and just have fun <laughs> oh oh I, I i have a weird one if you're going to be installing oracle database and you don't have the ability to x forward mm -hmm. and you don't have a pre-configured answer file you need to go through the uh, gui installer so if you're on a headless box this might be might be useful no oh and you can access your gmail yeah I mean, you, you can do that. You can do that through Mutt too. Yes, you can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. just thinking, like right now, if I was in a position to hire um, an employee or an intern and buy them a 37, 38 inch ultra wide 4 UHD display for their new PC and just have this running, and that's all they could deal with. It. <laughs> that, that's just well, funny. see that. That that's the challenge, right? Do they do they just sit there and take it, or do they just install something else? Because they can, because it's Linux. No, not without the uh, passwords. They won't be installing anything, maybe. Um, so this is neat. Uh, satellites, you like tracking them? This is coming from Libra Space. You can find all this business in our show notes, along with everything else. This is a cool little tool. I mean, it lets you track overhead satellites as much as one can expect. Uh, as a civilian, yeah, not, 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 not the fun ones, not the fun ones. My first thought was like, Hey man, can this track items that are currently in the ocean? Hashtag Zuma, uh, just little updates. They finished the migration to GTK three and an update to the satellite data. And yeah, G, what is it? G predict, I guess you would say. Yeah. yeah G, G predict, G predict. Could predict. I always do that wrong, but that's cool because I know there's apps that show current planes, you know, and flights and all that. But mm -hmm. yeah, this is like some next level Kerbals type stuff, I guess. I've never been that curious, but if you are um, 
kind of worried about satellites falling on you i don't know one is but, but but and and that's that's the thing though like this lets you track the registered satellites not the not the sketchy black ops satellites or like google satellite cannon that like beams a, like a tracking laser on you every time you use google maps I don't know, man. Maybe um, it has like one of those things like Electron does, like developer mode. It actually goes into the uh, satellites that aren't up there. Oh, that would, that would be miserable if this was an Electron app, or if those if those like special satellites are running Electron. Ugh. <laughs> I do, why, why does my satellite need to run Chrome? Oh, I, man, I don't know. They're probably running embedded Windows. I mean, it's probably oh, won't argue goodness. against that. But hey, man. Uh, that's that. We're going to have a little discussion about SourceForge. You know, everyone's Ooh. golden child of, uh, net, yeah, I'm just lying to you people. Um, <laughs> it, it was where you went to download emulators back in the day. Way back in the day. Uh, check it out. The new SourceForge. They gave it a facelift. I'm not joking. They've also created a GitHub and Porter tool, which I think is completely hilarious. However, Jordan... You disagree. I I don't I don't think it's absolutely hilarious. I think there's definitely a use for it if you're going to use GitHub for like your source management and then SourceForge for your binary distribution. Mm -hmm. You could totally because I, I I read I read through their documentation just to just to see what it could actually do. And yeah, you can you can totally just have like releases that are automatically built built from GitHub hosted on uh, on SourceForge. So if you if you wanted to sort of play to each platform's strengths, that is definitely a thing you can do though. But Oh man, SourceForge, they have they have a lot of bad reputation to answer for these days. Like they, they have their new fancy web 2.0, they're ripping off like the GitHub um mm -hmm. sort of color scheme. Uh yeah, I'm not sure that this is going to be a thing they can absolutely recover from. They have like I said, they have a lot of stuff to answer for. They absolutely and, do, man. Um listen, first off, I'm going to say for uh, more options, more better. 100% behind that. I guess you could say having a GitHub backup, you know, you could use that the same way we use YouTube. We don't act, act, expect people to watch it, but it's free offsite backup. We're not charging anything for it. Mm -hmm. However, riddle me this is I, I personally believe, you know, for the love of flying spaghetti monster, they need to get rid of the SourceForge name that is tainted. It is bad. It is beyond tainted. And no manner of any any lackerty hairdo, sparkly cowboy boots, fancy mustache, uh, rhinestones, you're not there's nothing you can put on this source forge thing that's ever going to change that. It it has got the pre and I know it was the previous owners. Current owners current owner, I've seen him in the Reddits and on uh, and on the slash dots talking about it. he's like, Man, we still got like over a million uniques and all these projects. Uh, that's great. Listen to the listen. If I'm the voice of reason and sanity. Something's horribly wrong. Change the name to something else other than Source Forge. It's I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, Jill. What's your what's your take on it? Oh, it's just been so hard to see such a stalwart website and open source community get so bad. Uh, we can only hope that this will let it recover just a little bit, but I think it's too late, unfortunately. And, you know, back in yeah. the day, we kind of used this, like, it was kind of used a lot like GitHub. It was a place that you could go and find new open source projects. Mm -hmm. And I used to use it all the time and still do. But now you, you get all the ads. It's just... It's well, they just have, they removed the downloads, you know, the adware downloads the, that they were the, packing in. The, the yes. The buttons, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they did. They yeah. quit bundling, you know, GIMP with something else they've said some yeah, sketchy yahoo thing. toolbar or some garbage yeah 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 I, I i mean i've i'm kind of on the fence with the name change thing because on the one hand people actually know what the hell a source forge is if they we're we're, we're, we're s'more sporge now okay cool i'm just gonna go back to using github hmm. well, yeah. just like everyone else that was the thing. I wanted to give it a mention. Uh, maybe they're going to do something with it. Uh, it's. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm with you, Jill. I remember using it back source forge. I remember fresh meat. That was the thing too. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and that's or, another reason or, why I use actually Ting. Ting, uh, the mobile carrier, mm -hmm. is um, NVMe, came from yeah. fresh meat. Not NVMe. NVMe. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> which which is all owned by two cows now. Mm. Yes. Correct. <laughs> 
That is a thing. Before we get out of here, um, some kids, they, they need to get off of our collective lawns because one of their science projects wants to make the 486 great again. And um, this came from Arthur and he added it to our show notes, which is something patriots can do. All right. Let's just do roundtable. What did they do? They got a what an older distribution running on that looks like a PS2 compatible something or another, and they got getting yeah, they're, Gentoo they're, they're, up and running on. They're using Dance yeah, Gentoo. Linux. Yeah. So tell me about it. Yeah. Anyone? <laughs> no, or, no. We're we're just going to sit here in silence for five minutes, and that's going to be the story. <laughs> All right. Um, it, it, the, the it's like a, Andy a little piece. bit on my end. Sorry about that. You know, I, I ran a 486 <laughs> way back in the day with Linux on it. And granted, it might have been a router. So I'll say that. Uh, Jordan, it seems like they were kind of roundabout doing this business. Because I say if you want to get the credit for this, they need a stack of Slackware floppies, dial-up modem, and all access to any major search engine or minor search engine. Uh, they, they can only use archive.org. They can use search.com from that period and uh, hotbot. Man, and man. But yeah, uh, here, here, here's the thing. They cheated. Um, they did not compile everything on this 486 because according to them, it would take forever. I say get back to me after the fifth failed 24-hour GCC compile on your single core, like 800 megahertz ARM V5 tel with like half a half a gig of ram and loading on an sd card which is about the same power as one of these 486s um but yeah they, they used the, they used the thinkpad t430 to cross compile uh everything um and then they just used they downloaded the default gen 2 footprint loaded it on there installed lilo that that's a that's a bit of a blast from the past mm -hmm. uh we love using lilo, lilo. <laughs> yeah but start use, using uh compact flashcard as a go-between uh yeah so they 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 eventually got it working they got it running in text mode i wonder if they could run that uh ssh and uh, ssh ascii based uh x server that we covered in the previous story that'd be that'd be an interesting um mm. thing they, they document how they uh pulled in some old patches from um some older uh kernels just to uh just to get specific hardware working uh and yeah that that's that's it it's it's a neat little science project for the kids, but I really feel they should have sweat a little bit more through it. Yeah, you know, they were trying to go for the latest and greatest, but you can, there is another distro called Antix or Antix. That's a Debian-based small distro for older computers, and it runs on 386s and 486s. And in fact, uh, we use that to uh, install install on um, old laptops for um, the kids on computers projects with the linux chicks la and um mm. it's really good for that it's 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 the most update debian that you could put on uh the 486 and i have several 486s and some with uh debian on them and i have damn small linux on one and um i often boot them with uh linux on a floppy it was the first linux mm -hmm. distro with an x window manager and it works perfectly fine on my 486 and, and my 386s. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> a fun experiment. I, I think, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I agree with Jordan. Cheating a little bit. Cheating a little bit, but that's cool. The, they're, they're eating so many pumpkins while they're being cheater cheaters. Hey, man, maybe they can uh, play with some loud pumpkins. This is something I tossed together. Uh, how to... Increase that recording volume on, well, basically, if you're using Pulse, this is how we do it. I also have some Jack running in there just kind of showing you that business because one of the issues you might run into is it doesn't go to 11. With your recording syncs with Pulse Audio, you'll have 100%, 150% at max, and you might have a very low input, and you need just a little bit more. This is a way to do it with a PA man. Pulse Audio Manager, pop in there. This is a, what, three-minute long video. It'll get you in, get you out, get it done. And Bob will, in fact, be your uncle at the end of the day, and you will have louder audio. Um, it'll make you happy. It'll, it'll make you the cool kid in uh, class. Not really, but 
It, it'll at least make you the loud kid in class. It'll make you the loud kid. Yeah, I have that extra loud video that sounds horrible. And that is something I mention in that guide is you're just amplifying what's going in there. So be, be on the lookout for the room noise and everything else that's involved. Jill, uh, do you, you, you've worked with audio on Linux once or twice, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, in fact, in fact, for for this show and my future endeavors with Linux Gamecast, I set up an XLR mic um, going into um, an old 1990s PCI uh, uh, sound card called the Digigram. And it um, it actually has the opposite. It, it came in way too loud. So I have to monitor it with VU meters and whatnot. Because it's very, very powerful. So oh, I'd bring up the soldering iron and throw some resistors in that thing. <laughs> yeah, those, yeah uh, I was, was going to say, do you, do you get the well. additional warmth and hum from mm -hmm. running running a ISA thirty two bit sound card? Yes. <laughs> we, we we did tr true story. We ran a nineties sound card, like probably for the first fifty shows like we did. Two, yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. It was like an AWE 64 PCI Sound Blaster. Old school. Oh, okay. Yeah. All 64s were great. I had the 32, the 64. They were great sound Those, cards. those were good, but fortunately, we were able to upgrade, and uh, we were only able to do that with your support. Uh, thank you, everyone, who support not just this show, but uh, what we do on Saturday, which is a lot more, a little more edgier, Linux Gamecast Weekly. Uh, if you like what we do, you you like this, um, what, what is it, a dog and pony show, Jordan? Is, is that a fair way to call it? Mm -hmm. I I I, th I think there's a couple more ponies than dogs. Also, they might be dead, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, we got all sorts of wonderful links that you can click and enter your credit card number through. It's going to be great. Uh, ex except those bottom two QR codes. Those have no credit cards involved. And there's also that the Patreon thing we do, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. It's the thing that funds this very show. The thing that you were watching right now would not exist without your continued support. We got a bunch of people giving us uh, money. Uh, what's what's the Patreon at? So I've missed that number. As I furiously scroll back up, 107 beautiful party patrons making this possible, stopping us now. Listen, we never wanted to do ads. We don't have to do ads. And that's because all of you were about to be throwing up a big, stinking new goal. I'm, I'm not even going to announce it. I'm just going to be that guy and tease you about it just a little mm. bit. Uh, something that's probably going to start on Friday. And it is going to be the first uh, pinky toe organ in the water of kind of the real secret reason we built out this studio. More on that later. But now we're asking 16 quarters a month. You get access to our Discord. That's rocking in there. Early access to show notes. You get your name in the credits. Stick around. Check that out. Same day access to all of our live uncut VODs. Reserve spots for any game streams that we do. And hey, man, you can buy your way on the show if you want. But hey, but wait, there's more, Jordan, because we do an extra show that only patrons get to listen to every week. Yeah, it's the pre pre super shows, and it happens. We were, it's the production meeting that happens pre LGC weekly. Mm -hmm. You get to be a fly on the wall. You get to hear us talk about all sorts of crazy crap that you have to actually pay money to get uh, if you want to get that incriminating uh, footage slash audio recording. And I do have a but little it's... bit of surprising news. I think everyone knows that normally Frank is at choir practice on Wednesdays, but this is our 100th <laughs> show. <laughs> So Frank showed up. He made it. He made it. He's he's going to go to um, choir practice this evening. They've rescheduled it. I just kind of wish he'd get into something a bit more mainstream like voodoo. But that's for all the beautiful people who have picked us, including Jill and Steve. <laughs> that's our fine, upstanding cannibal wool. That's why it's called that, people with dirty minds. And we have Bradley, Erod, uh, Mikkel G, John M. I can't read Linux New, Clocky Estivo, at the Admiral JT, Mir, Trugs. Frenchie, Luchers.net, go check that out. NMAG, Dan W, and J. It's kind of brilliant. And uh, you guys have helped us build out this studio, which we still got a gang of shit on. Oh, I mean, stuff. Oh, man, it's been a while since I party fell. I didn't, I didn't do it this week. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. wash my mouth out with a lollipop of pie. Jordan, what do we got <laughs> this week? Uh, we, we, we got some meat pies on sticks, apparently. No, we got uh, Hydra Zero. This is a uh, thing... 
for uh, 3D printers using uh, Raspberry Pis. I didn't read the story because it looked like Jill took it, so I'm going to hand it off to her. <laughs> yeah, so this is so you can set up a, a controller board with your your printer and uh, make it do, do ki uh, all kinds of wonderful things. One is... Uh, uh, checking your uh, checking the print time on a, a smartwatch uh, was one of the projects I found, and another one was, uh, was making the three D printer blink with all all uh, lots of RGB goodness. <laughs> so that's a fun one. But there's been a lot of really cool projects for uh, for. Uh, um, What's this? Why am I looking at Batman? What's going on here? What's up? Joe? Yeah, that was interesting. That was uh, um... oh boy. You, you, don't, you don't need a reason for Batman. It, Batman just yeah. appears. He has uh, the knife. I don't know, man. It says here's an octo print project to RGB all the things, and I thought there might be a story behind it. Apparently, I was incorrect in that <laughs> assumption. No, it was just it was just making it. It was just being able to change the colors on the printer, <laughs> case modding it essentially. All right, that's pretty cool. <laughs> That's it was just neat. fun because everyone likes to RGB all the things. No, they don't. Um, hey, AMD, I'll give you. A, I'll, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of credit, but I'm, this is nothing to do with the Raspberry Pi. But you announced your new Wraith Max Turbo Yellow Swag Cooler. Your second feature was blinky LED. You know what? Fifth feature was like goth emo mode for RGB haters. I'm not kidding. This was on the promotional material, like. That, I, I don't say that. Hey, man, uh, your Raspberry Pi is stupid. It's so dumb it can't even uh, do branch protection. Well, it, it's it's a little, a little. It's not paid enough to look into the future. So this is this is a post from the Raspberry Pi blog. Link to all this stuff is in our show notes. Evan Upton, who I've had very very long intimidating conversations with, uh, wrote this up, and it basically explains why the Raspberry Pi is not vulnerable to Spectre or Meltdown. And it basically goes through how the things work in very convoluted example. It's very, very thorough, though. I highly recommend you give this a look. It explains what a side channel attack is. And the conclusion is that because uh, the Cortex A7 and A53, which is what the Raspberry Pis are based off of, do not have speculative branch prediction, uh, in addition to not caching as aggressively, are not vulnerable to these uh, spe meltdown specter bugs. Hmm. That being said, uh, other AH64 CPUs are definitely. Um, there's going to be some OS patching involved. Um, Zom, it's the end of the world. We're, we're Meltdown is literally going to melt all of our faces if you touch a computer. Well, I think so it's, it's very fair to like say. Indiana is, Jones. Any arm that you would find at Enterprise is going to be vulnerable, just not our Tinker Toy Raspberry Pis, right? Thank yeah, goodness. Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> And also, also if you have, uh, if you have like a bunch of older plug computers or like other boards like this that um, you're just using for projects, they are not vulnerable either because they are probably using an even older version of the ARM v5, ARM v6, or ARM v7 architecture. What about so my PDP forty? Um, <laughs> that's going to actually gain sentience and just try to physically strangle you. So uh, watch out for that again. Yeah, my my uh, PDP eleven is in, uh, invulnerable also. <laughs> only because you keep it air gapped, man. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, that's the only reason. You got to watch out for those things. They're shady, and you know it. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, maybe you know something that's terribly shady uh, going on in the world of Linux, and like shady cool. You want to throw some good shade at it? I don't know if there's good shade, but if there is, tell us about it because you can get on the show we'll read what you gotta say if you got some hints thoughts allegations things better left unsaid we would like to know maybe just some complaints about this show like you don't know what you're talking about i'm on the internet look at me um just do me a favor make sure you select uh, lwdw linux weekly daily wednesdays or for a saturday show jordan does a relationship advice segment um definitely I, I, I i will fix your marriage good it is a thing all we need is name email and you know i i kind of double down on this i i don't say this all the time. At least be smart enough to type in a BS email address that's resolvable or it just instantly goes to spam and we never see it. I clean out that folder like once every four months by right clicking and poof. But but I, I totally own fartatfarts.com. What are you talking about? 
A boot. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm talking about, uh, we were talking about the, what was it last week? It, I want to call it Star Office. It was like Star Office, but worse because it had more DRM tied into it. And um, we're like, hey, what do you use? Manuel wrote us back to talk about uh, his personal LibreOffice. LibreOffice, man. He says, uh, oh, I've done a lot of talking. Jordan, you take it. I, I mean, he calls it GNU plus LibreOffice, which I'm pretty sure is not the actual name of the project. Mm -hmm. But he says, regarding a Microsoft Word replacement, I actually prefer LibreOffice, which I've taken to calling GNU plus Libre or whatever. I've tried WPS Office despite my suspicion of the software and does great with normal text files, but some of my old files with fancy nested tables give me a random Chinese characters because you probably have some Unicode overlap. GNU plus LibreOffice. Ugh. Actually opens the files correctly, even if it changes the line weights, colors, and renders fonts differently. Uh, at least the file opens and can be edited correctly. A few years back, some of my files disappeared from Google Drive. Also, I haven't checked recently, but last I knew, Google Docs doesn't do too great with nested tables. Jordan will know a lot about this issue, as he's into pen and tape paper gaming. I write a lot of pen and paper gaming materials, which practically demand a lot of complex tables. They don't demand nested tables. Also, um, there, there, there's an entirely different debate I could be having about why you should organize your tables better in your role-playing guides but you, you 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 can you can hit me up after we get to the contact section we'll have that debate yeah i don't know i've been using i've been using google office pretty or uh google um google drive pretty You've been using the google for, office man do they know they haven't kicked you out <laughs> that listen, listen listen man it's where i sleep at night i'm cold it's 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 icy in the toronto winters uh well, but even even then, Google Apps is pretty solid. I yes, I've heard of sometimes files will just randomly disappear. I don't think I've ever encountered that, but of course, if um, if you are ultra paranoid about Google messing up, which they do, they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, not yet until the Google AI achieves true sentience and then rules us all. Um, then yeah, you're definitely gonna want to stick with LibreOffice. It's pretty solid. If you want something a little more lightweight, Appy Word is also fine. I don't know how it's going to deal with nested tables, well, but there, there's no sh there's no shortage of Office software on Linux. Uh, d does he mean GNU Libre nested tables? Is that the the right way to say G it? G GNU, GNU plus Linux plus tables uh, um, with, with and, and and knuckles and knuckles. And Jill, knuckles. what do you use? I, I'm Google all the things. I don't. I, I think yeah. it's always in Google's interest not to lose your stuff because they're a data mining company to sell ads. And yeah. I know that. I understand. Mm -hmm. I'm the product. They don't charge me anything. Which, well, I pay them whatever for the Google Drive thing, but they don't give me a phone number to call anyone up. Yeah, I use LibreOffice, Google Docs, or just uh, NetEdit or XEdit or GEdit. Hmm. <laughs> Those are there. In fact, for most of my notes, I just use GEdit or Vi. <laughs> oh, I, I use everyone's <laughs> favorite text yeah. editor. It's called Thunderbird. <laughs> Emacs for life. Uh, I guess. <laughs> if I if I if I had air for horns, they would be playing right now. <laughs> I love editing video in my text editor. It's the greatest thing ever. And then I can check my IRC and email without That's, leaving the program. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Hey, Jill. Thanks again so much for filling in for Pedro, who just totally bailed on us. Aw, oh, he had important things to do, though. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, 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 he didn't. None. <laughs> he, didn't. He, he just <laughs> tapped out. Jordan, same goes for you, buddy. Uh, thanks for showing up, man, on your vacation. And, uh... Yep. Take, taking time away from my precious video games. I'm feeling the itch. <laughs> oh, snap. Ladies and gentlemen, boys I got, and girls. I got the Switch itch. We want to thank everyone who showed up live in Shot Realm and, uh, Scream back in our direction. We'll be back next week. I don't know what the configuration of Ultron will be, but it will be one of that. But we need to thank all the beautiful people making this possible, and we like to do that with a little thing called credits. Oh, yes. <laughs> awesome. See, Joe, yeah, you're even in, <laughs> you, you're in the... Uh, it's, ang 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 angry Canadian. Yeah, and Joe Bryan. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> And we got our executive Thank you producers. Thank so much for having me on, Ben. This is exciting. I've been wanting to do this for a while now. So. Yeah, yeah, it's like writing a chainsaw. <laughs> it's not something you should ever do, but as long as you don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs>
and your friends and family don't find out, it's usually pretty cool. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> actually man, I saw the people who were on the ice skates, and they, they do it in Canada, apparently, and they stick the chainsaw into the ice lake and zzz and take off. Oh, and they just, like, take off with a block of ice? No, no, they go flying across the frozen lake. 